Hi, I'm Scott Kane. I'm the Generic Model Organism Database Project Coordinator and a WORM-based developer and a group leader for the Alliance of Genome Resources. And I'm going to talk today about using Docker to make uh, JBrowse 1 deployment easier. But before I get started, uh, I just want to uh, acknowledge uh, the fact that there are a lot of people who work on these projects, uh, including people in Gmod, JBrowse, WORM-based, and AGR, and those people who helped are helped a lot are uh, marked with asterisks here. But uh, it's it's a big community. Why? Uh, would I give a talk about JBrowse 1 when JBrowse 2 is very cool uh, and there's another talk about it today. Um, but the reason why is the installed base for JBrowse 1 is very large and I've created some tools that I think will be generally useful so we thought we'd share. And uh, additionally the relatively simple concepts presented here are likely to be extended to JBrowse 2 in the near future. So things we're presenting today, basically two Docker base images, which are the things that you use basically to start a new Docker file. Uh, so one is the JBrowse build env which is a, uh, a tool to make it easy to build a very lightweight Nginx-based uh, JBrowse server. And then uh, JBrowse GFF base, which is a tool that has a lot of prerequisites installed to allow uh, processing of uh, GFF into either NC list, uh, JSON, or Tabix indexed GFF files. Um, and there are lots of implementation examples I'll mention at the end. Um, but things I'm not talking about because I don't really have time is that there's a lot of nice work you can do with Ansible and GoCD to make automating and uh, the building and serving of these Docker containers really easy. Um, I'm also not talking about uh, how it's nice to have uh, version containers in Docker Hub uh, because occasionally we get requests from users to say, oh, I'd like to see this old data in JBrowse and now I can just spin up a Docker, you know, Docker image into a container of that old data and uh, there it is right there for them. Uh, so first, uh, JBrowse GFF base. Uh, so it provides a lot of things, AWS command line tools, genome tools, uh, BGZip and Tabix from uh, Jim Kent's software tools, BioPerl, SAM tools, and the JBrowse command line tools. So it's a lot of stuff, but on its own, what does it do? Mm, nothing. So what is it good for? So here's a simple example. So uh, ZFIN, the Zebrafish Model Organism Database, needs to develop a new genome browser to take the place of their aging GBrowse instance. Um, and because ZFIN and WormBase are both part of uh, HER, I offered to help. Um, so basically, I created a simple Docker file that uses that uh, JBrowse GFF base. And uh, it basically, uh, I also included in a tool that um, will upload that NC list data to S3, which makes it really easy. You'll see where that's included in a minute. And then it runs a simple shell script that just fetches the data from ZFIN, processes it into an NC list data, and then uploads it to GFF. And here's the link for that Docker file. The Docker file itself is super simple. Uh, basically, like I said, it just pulls in uh, some configuration data and a, a tool from these two repos, moves some files around to make life easier, and then runs this bash script. So all of the magic is in this bash script. But this bash script isn't that complicated either, at least uh, at least for ZFIN data. Basically, it's these two lines of, of code here that uh, basically fetch the data and process it into NC list, and then delete it when it's done with it. Um, and then it runs the JBrowse name indexer. And then it uploads all of that data to an S3 bucket. And so all these variables in this, this uh, shell variables are passed in as environment variables when it's launched. So now we've got data. Now we need to get the server. So basically, now we start with the uh, JBrowse dev end Docker file. And so it pulls in the JBrowse source. It pulls in some configuration, you know, JBrowse configuration files. It pulls in any plugins. Uh, and then it will build JBrowse. So it, JBrowse doesn't get built in the base image. It gets built in the, the container we're creating. And that's so that we can pull in any plugins that we want. Uh, because that has to happen at build time for JBrowse 1. And uh, then we just transfer the necessary files after we're done you know, generating everything we need uh, during the build. We transfer it into a smaller container that ends up being 200 or less uh, megabytes that just runs Nginx and has the files just needed for running JBrowse. And, uh, and that configuration file is set to use all the data that got transferred to S3 in the last line. The link for that Docker file is here. There are several other examples um, that I don't really have much time to talk about, but basically uh, WormBase has two different JBrowse instances, one that kind of uses 30 plus assemblies. Uh, it, we have Docker containers that build or that uh, process GFF into NC list and one that creates a server. Uh, same thing for WormBase protein uh, GFF that makes uh, amino acid coordinate JBrowses, plus Docker files for a SARS-CoV-2 server that runs on covid.jbrowse.org right now, uh, one for the AGR JBrowse server and a demo for the Flybase JBrowse server that's not used anywhere yet, but probably will be sometime soon. Um, and uh, we also have a place in GitHub for collecting these various examples. So if you only walk away with one URL now, this is the one. This uh, GitHub repo is where we have all those. And if you'd like to, um, if you'd like help getting started doing this sort of thing, or you've already used it and you'd like to brag because these are these images are already on Docker Hub, you can email uh, the JBrowse mailing list at this gmod ajax ajax list, um, or contact us on the JBrowse Gitter, uh, or you can email me directly at scott at 